A stack is one of the primary navigators that lets us move between screens on mobile. In this video, we'll look at how to navigate and pass data between screens on a stack. I've reset my project back to one layout file that returns a stack navigator and three screens. We already have a link from the first screen to the second. So let's copy this and link from the second to third and from the third back to index. I'll also make the second screen blue and the third screen green, just so it's easier to differentiate between them. All of our links are set to push. So we're always pushing a new screen onto the stack. So using push, we'd expect to go from index to second to third to index to second, etc. So we go from index to second to third to index to second to third. And when we go back, we actually go the same amount of screens back. Now let's add another button to dismiss to the index screen. So in this case, we have three screens on the stack. And then when we dismiss back to the index, we would expect it to dismiss these two screens and we only end up with index on our stack. So let's give it a go. From the index screen, we go to second, third, and then from here, we dismiss to index. You can see this is now the only screen on our stack. Note that dismiss to will dismiss to the top instance of the screen in the stack. So if we go around twice, so we have two instances of the index screen on the stack, we actually end up in the topmost index screen. Let's try this now. So we go to second, third, index second, third, so we're here now, and then we'll dismiss to index. And you see, we still have a back button because we are here. So we still have third, second, and index. So third, second, and back to index. We also have replace, which will replace the current screen with the new one. So in this case, we have index second and third. And then from here, if we replace third with the second screen, we expect to get two instances of the second screen on the stack. So from index to second to third, and then replace with second, which you can see the back button says second. So we're on this screen right now. So if we go back, we expect to go to second and then index. Second and then index. All of these and more are also available when using the user router hook. I didn't really talk about navigate, which is also the default for link if you don't override it. In the past, navigate would actually act the same as push but if there was already an instance of the screen on a stack, it would dismiss to it. So this would end up with this. This default behavior changed in React Navigation 7, where navigate essentially becomes the same as push. Router is built on top of React Navigation, which is why it was also affected by this change. So feel free to use navigate instead of push. Just know that there is some difference in behavior depending on your router version. Let's now see how you could pass params between screens. I'll add another button here, also linking to screen two. But for this one, I want to pass in param with a name so that the second page could display a greeting. The href in the link component accepts a string but it also accepts an object. So we can pass the path name in the object. And in addition, we can also add params. 
params needs to be a serializable object, so no passing in functions. Now on a second page, I can use the use local search params hook to access these params. Also, if you're using TypeScript, you can also type them. Let's display a greeting if this name param is set. Now, when I press this button and navigate to the second page, it shows the greeting. And of course, we can do the same with the use router hook. So push, as well as all the other navigation functions, can accept an object instead of a string. And so we've also hooked this button up to pass on the pram to display the greeting. You can make a segment of a route dynamic by wrapping it in square brackets. I want to create a screen that displays some proverbs. So I want the route to be slash proverbs and the proverb ID. So I'll create a folder called proverbs and a file with ID in square brackets. So this part is going to be dynamic. I'm not going to add a layout file here because I want this screen to still be governed by this stack. So we'll do a default export for the proverb screen and we'll return a full page view with space for the proverb and the source. I wanted to use cursor in these videos, but unfortunately it is too good and prevents me from talking through all the code. So I've turned it off, but I'm sure we can use it to generate some data. So give me a list of 10 motivational proverbs. So now we need to get access to this ID so we would know which proverb to show. And we do this with use local search params, which we can also type. So let's find the proverb from our list. And we'll also need to handle the not found case. So in case we don't have the proverb with the given ID. And otherwise, we'll display it. Now, if we open the index page, let's add a link to the proverb. There's two ways we can do this. One way to do this is with the link, we can simply pass in the proverbs slash one. And the other way is to be a little bit more explicit about it where we pass in the path name and the params separately. By the way, you can also make a middle part of a route dynamic, and you can have multiple dynamic parts in one route. So for example, let's create a route like products, category, product ID. But we want both the category and the product ID to be dynamic. So we'll add a folder called products and a dynamic folder called category in square brackets and a dynamic file with product ID in square brackets. I'll keep it simple here and I'll just show you what the contents of the use local search params will be. So we'll stringify the params object. Now, when I go back to the index page and add a link to say product slash shoes slash one, two, three, four, then we can see both of the dynamic path segments here. So far, we haven't defined a single screen. Just returning the stack navigator from our layout is enough to make all of these screens work. But we can list our screens here in order to configure them and pass in screen options. For example, if we look at this proverb screen, the screen title by default is the route, which usually doesn't look too great. So we can override it with screen options. Let's open up the stack here and add a stack screen with name proverbs slash ID. So the name will be the path name minus the leading slash. So under options, I can add a title to the screen and call it proverb. So now the title has been updated. 
but it is always the same even though we are using a dynamic route. We do have access to the route here, so we could change this into a function to show the proverb ID. This makes the title dynamic, but showing the proverb ID here isn't really much better. Ideally, I would like to show the source of the proverb instead, but that information is only inside the screen. Thankfully, the screen options can also be configured inside the screen. So we'll add a stack.screen, no name needed. And I can set the proverb source as the title. So this makes it easy to change the title based on data available only inside the screen. You can set the screen options in both the layout file and also the screen itself. The screen level options will override any duplicate layout ones. Screen options allow you to customize all sorts of things about the screen, like the header style, title, buttons, etc. For a full list of options, it's often useful to explore the TypeScript types. So on my editor, it is control space. One of the things we can configure is how the screen animates in. By default on iOS, the screen slides in from the right. On Android, we have this slide fade thing going on. But we could set both of these to slide from the bottom, for example. Or even turn off the animation altogether. In this video, we looked at using stack navigators with XR Router. By the way, you'll find a link to the code and the documentation in the description. See you next time.